Hi, this video is about the ATP CP system. So it's an anaerobic energy system and specifically with regard to the study design, we need to understand how the energy systems interplay, but we also need to know the rate, how quickly they can produce ATP, the capacity, so uh, how how much energy that they can provide and also what fuels that they use in order to produce ATP. So just recapping, we have our ATP-CP system, anaerobic glycolysis, both of which are anaerobic systems that do not use oxygen. And then we have our aerobic system that does utilize oxygen. So ATP. How do we produce energy? When ATP is broken, so ATP is adenosine triphosphate, three phosphates, when it is broken into ADP, adenosine diphosphate two, and the inorganic phosphate left over, that is when we get the release of energy. Because we only have a couple of seconds of ATP stored in our muscle, we need to produce more. So we do this via three energy systems. This video is just looking at the ATP-CP system. So the fuel that the ATP-CP system uses is PC, phosphocreatine, or it can be pronounced CP creatine phosphate. So we use PC so we use the CP which is also stored in our muscle and we only have about 10 seconds or 15 seconds of CP stored in our muscle. What happens is uh, after the ATP is broken up into the ADP and the inorganic phosphate, the CP then breaks and the phosphate from the creatine phosphate joins up with the ADP over here on the screen. So the CP breaks up to C plus P and then the P joins up with the ADP and whooshka gives us the ATP again. This is one of my favourite graphs. If we are just looking at the ATP-CP system, at the beginning of exercise, as you can see from the graph, all energy systems contribute to providing ATP. The, the ATP-CP system is the fastest system. It produces energy the fastest, but it's also the shortest. So if you look at the blue line, I'll change my marker to blue, it provides us with the fastest amount of energy, but um, it doesn't last very long. This is time in seconds. So if this is 25 seconds here, see, it's almost completely gone. It peaks, it peaks at about five, five to 10 seconds. That's when the ATP CP system peaks, which means it produces the most amount of um, energy at that point, but then will decline in how much energy it can supply uh, because the body simply runs out of phosphocreatine. It needs time to replenish that in order to, to use that system more to provide ATP. Remembering back to the study design, we're looking at two things with energy systems, the rate and the capacity. So the rate is very fast, it's the quickest, quickest of the three energy systems. Uh, however, the, the capacity is relatively small. This is the perfect diagram to help us understand the rate, how fast, and the capacity, so how much energy it provides. So again, specifically looking at ATP, CP, it, the fuel that it uses is a chemical fuel, P, 
CPC or CP. The rate, so how fast it is, it's the fastest. It's the most rapid. But it only gives us about one ATP for every, uh, I think it's um, for every molecule of CP. So, uh, so the rate is very fast. The, another term for capacity is yield. So how much it yields is, is very small. This table uh, is a good comparison for each of the systems. So ATP, CP, we are most rapid and pretty small, 0.7 to 1. So here is a summary of the uh, ATP, CP energy system. Take your time to read that. The major points is that it's the most rapid energy system. It doesn't utilize oxygen. It, uh, it is an anaerobic energy system and its, um, its yield or its capacity is very small. You only get one ATP um, for each molecule of, of, um, of PC. And once the PC is, is being exhausted, uh, it's also, um, because it does get exhausted for a maximal uh, activity, it is regarded as a finite energy system, which means um, once the fuel is depleted, it cannot use that energy system again to contribute ATP. However, in intermittent sports such as soccer and AFL and netball, uh, many athletes have uh, passive rest time that enable the body to resynthesize the PC uh, and once that fuel is available, that system can be activated and provide that energy very quickly again. Full replenishment to get your stores back to 100% takes about 10 minutes of, 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 of passive rest. This table helps to highlight the fact that our anaerobic energy system, so in this case it's actually the ATP, CP as well as the anaerobic glycolysis, uh, denoted by the oxygen deficit. Remember at the beginning of exercise when uh, your heart rate's trying to increase and your respiratory rate's increasing, you're in oxygen deficit. You cannot supply enough oxygen for the demand. So you are working anaerobically because that energy system doesn't require oxygen. You also, you, the aerobic system is also contributing, but in the beginning predominantly anaerobic. But as you can see from this graph, it's the same, regardless of the event, uh, because once that fuel, the CP fuel runs out, um, this system you know, is, is finite. So training the three energy systems, training the ATP, CP system, if you have an event such as shot put or uh, the uh, 100 metres, which as you know for uh, elite athletes is around 10 seconds, that is predominantly uh, using the ATP, CP to provide the, the, the mo uh, most of the ATP. So how do we train that? Well, we only train in short bursts. We are at a maximal intensity and um, we have what's called um, a work to rest ratio. It means uh, we work once, so a one to three is we work once for say one, um, say 10 seconds and then we would rest for 30 seconds. Work for 10 seconds, rest for 30 seconds or it may even be longer than that, one to five. So that gives you more rest to enable the PC stores to restore. And so you can practice using that fast system. So a one to five work to rest ratio, 10 seconds work, 50 seconds rest. And that would enable uh, a high percentage of the PC to be restored so that you can use that system uh, to its maximum. The recovery is passive. To enable the PC restoration, you just need to be still. Whereas some of the other energy systems, an active recovery is more appropriate. 
Here are some examples of how we train the ATP CP system. The methods that we use, we'll look more into this uh, when we begin our training program. Short interval training, sprint training, plyometrics, and, and weight resistance when we use a very high weight and um, several reps uh, fast, explosively. Uh, remember drift, intensity, duration. Uh, maximal intensity, the duration is uh, specific to the energy system, so about 10, 10 to 15 seconds, and a passive recovery to enable PC restoration. As you can see, to, to get 98% of, of full PC re restoration, sorry, uh, you need to be passive for three minutes. So that's why sometimes AFL players will come off and rest on the bench for three minutes um, to get their 